Hi, this is Anne with um, the first short anagram in a series that I'm going to do on um, getting you started on converting the code that produces this super simple um, set of statistics for the COVID-19 data on the left into the somewhat more um, detailed data on the right. So um, you're going to start with data that's in between these two states, and I'm going to show you some of the work that I did when I was moving it into the state that you will start with. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is um, in this video, we're going to take this one video for one data point at a time, is we're going to add this total row. And um, totaling isn't the hardest of the statistic things you need to do, but I just want to show you exactly how to, to add rows to this table structure. So let me get rid of the blue arrow, turn all that off, and then we're going to look at some code. Okay. Um, we're going to work down here in show info. And one of the things that you do when you have data from an API like this is, is you absolutely positively need to understand what the data looks like. So um, when I'm developing like this, the first thing I do is I know I'm getting an, um, an array of objects from the API. And the first thing I need to do is find out what the property names for those are. So when I'm first developing, I always have a line like this to just um, console log the very first data item in that whole array. Now, the code I've got here has actually moved on beyond that to the point where um, I already am down here I know that the property I use to select the state of Wyoming is the province state property. And now I'm logging the first county row inside that array. So we're going to use this um, as, a, as a working version of, instead of looking at the, at the very first one, which I guess we could do just to see what the first data row in the world is. Okay, so the first data row in the world is um, the country of Afghanistan um, with no particular province or state and no admin to. So the data that they have for Afghanistan is for the whole country. The data they have for the United States is broken down by state and by county. Okay, so when you're getting an API, the very first thing you have to do is, is figure out what your properties are and how you select the data that you're interested in. And the data we're interested in is for the province state of Wyoming, okay? And, um, you know, these property names, they aren't the ones I'd pick. Um, I don't have any problem with province and state. That's pretty generic information title. Um, we would always have these be um, camel case with a lower C and an upper R. But when you're getting data from an API, you don't get to control that. And so you just live with what you got. So um, here we're selecting data for the state of Wyoming. And down here, we're seeing what the first county looks like. So um, that's just a tour of the data. If I want to create a total row, okay, um, we all know how to total. And I'm going to go ahead and call it total combined, confirmed, because we're trying to find the total number of confirmed cases. Um, the pattern is you, you create the variable, you set it to zero, and then down here inside this if statement, right, because we only want to total up things that are, um, that are for Wyoming, we come in here and we do total confirmed is equal to <clears throat> total confirmed, right? Because we're, we're accumulating in that variable. And then we need to use um, the data here for county obj confirmed. And I guess I should explain one more thing before I go any farther. And that is, um, 
I didn't, I wasn't originally doing this when I was working with this code. I wasn't originally, I was using data sub I primarily as uh, my, as my data object that I was using to um, get data from. And there are two or three problems with that. Um, some of them are small. Uh, for example, admin2 is kind of an awkward um, property name when we know that what we're looking for is the name of the county. So just by convenience, what I did for that is um, I'm creating a county object and I'm putting, basically I'm reconstructing data sub I to be more convenient for other processing. So this is purely convenience. I think of it as the county name. So in my county object, I'm going to go ahead and make the property that. This turns out to be quite a bit more important. Um, if you look over here, that confirmed is in quotes. So it's a string. And if I didn't, um, if I didn't parse it, and change it into a, a number. And this is just a, conven a JavaScript convenience utility function that will take a string and generate a number for it. If the string isn't a good numeric string, like it didn't have digits in it, you'd get a zero, but you'd get some kind of number. And so in my county obj, I go ahead and take and make that a good number. So I never have to worry about having to parse it again. Um, and I'll show you the difference here. Um, before I add total confirmed to the um, to the row, let me just console log it at the bottom and run this. And I think that code should work. Okay, and this is inside the loop, not outside the loop. Let me get rid of that. And I'm also, okay, so we're inside the state of Wyoming. We start with the value equals zero. And every time we take the numeric version of county obj and add it to total confirmed. And if I run that, I should see that, that on that particular day, the total cumulative number of cases is 4,944. Um, and if we just wanna check that against this output, yeah, that's the number I should be getting. And you do have a, in your slide deck, you'll have a copy of this and um, I, I recommend checking against it. Okay, just to show you what would happen, um, this is the kind of error that you will see from time to time and it will confuse you. So if we hadn't used county obj confirmed here and we had simply used the confirmed field, which was a string, you get something that looks like incredibly ugly unless you know what it is. So let me just run that same same code, except for we're using this thing, which is a string. And what you get is all of the various digits for all of the counties concatenated together. So that's why we have to be converting this version of the data into a numeric before we wanna do anything else with it. So um, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. I'm going to bring this down here. And now we all know, never heard to test it, that I'm getting a number there. Okay, so instead of console logging total confirmed, okay, I want it to show up in the table here as another row. Okay. So in order to do that, um, I, have to, um, I have to simply add another data row to the table. Okay. So we're going to take code like this. And instead of console logging total confirmed, we're going to add one more row to the table. Okay. 
Um, we don't change this argument because we're adding to the same table. But now what we need instead of a county row is we need a var total row, which is going to be an array. Okay, notice here we're creating the little two part array out of the county name and the and the numeric value. So here, I think the label we want is simply total. And the value we want to have there is total confirmed. So then all we do is we take total row, we add another row to the, to the table. And these are just convenience um, I've created three convenience um, functions for you. You can treat them as black boxes or you can look at them and try to understand them. They're just using the kind of um, DOM functionality that the book talks about this week, but I didn't want you to have to do that for yourself. So I've created that one for a header row, one for a data row, and then one that rounds data to two places. Okay, so, um, Let's see if that works. Okay. And I now have a total row with the value that we're after. That's all for this vid.